Hi guys, my name is Valerie, I'm a real Prague guide and today in our video we're gonna show you 30 plus of the beaten path things to see in Old Town and Jewish Quarter Prague. Old Town for Prague is like Manhattan for New York, Mitte for Berlin and blueberries for the blueberry pie. You cannot imagine one without the other. However, most tourists rush to see the Old Town Square, Astronomical Clock, Powder Tower, Charles University and the State's Theatre and Charles Bridge. And if you have never seen those, you should definitely check check them out. But if you want to go through a little adventure in the old town, this video is for you. Let's go! But we have to start somewhere, right? So let's start on the Old Town Square. Obviously, the further away you go from the square, the more of the beaten path attractions you will encounter. But not every site on the Old Town Square is explored by tourists. For example, this church. The Church of Our Lady Before Tin. A lot of people don't visit the interiors of this church because they cannot figure it out how to enter it. But I know how and I will show you. Like they just opened it. Say goodbye to the old town square. Go around the teen church and find the Gothic portal, which we showed in our previous videos, same as the museum in the House of the Golden Ring. I couldn't help but mention it again, because the exhibitions inside are one of a kind. Next, head to Ungild. Ungild is another place that we visited before in our Prague's Dirty Secrets video. Remember the brothel called Tunnel that they used to have here? Now they have opened the place with the same name. We love to see those traditional names passed to different businesses. Anyway, while you are in Ungild, check out the Renaissance Gernovsky Palace. Speaking of Renaissance, we do not have many churches built in this style, which only makes this one even more special – the Church of Salvator. In 1796, after the monastic order of the church was cancelled, they were minting coins inside. Without the God's grace, of course. Nowadays, the church belonged to evangelists. Around the church you can find some other curious buildings. Next, see the statue of Franz Kafka, one of the most mysterious writers born in Prague. Here you can see Franz Kafka himself, sitting on the shoulders of the empty suit, as if he jumped out from it and started to write him. Just like in his short story, The Description of a Struggle. Turn right and in a few minutes you will find yourself in a pretty strange place. Now we are entering one of the most mysterious corners of the Prague's old town, and here we have the house which claims to be the second oldest one in Prague. Apparently it dates back to the year 900. It used to stand next to the old merchant road, and in 16th century the eccentric king and holy Roman emperor Rudolf II ordered to build the alchemist laboratory in the underground of that house. Well, whatever it is people were doing inside of this house, it seemed to be pretty important, because it was not destroyed during the sanitization of the former Jewish ghetto in this part of the old town. Now they have the Museum of Alchemy inside. Just around the corner from the alchemist's laboratory is another house of the scientist. His name is Christian Doppler, famous for the Doppler effect, which describes changes in frequency of any kind of sound or light wave produced by a moving source with respect to an observer. I sounded very confident, didn't I? Well, that's my job, I had C in physics. I think Doppler would be surprised by the place that is now around the corner from his house, because this place appeared in the physical world by itself, after it was described in a book of a Czech writer Jaroslav Foglar. This little street is called Vestinadlech, and it's full of tributes to Foglar's books. Here his fans leave messages and their special symbols. Here you can find a pretty strange symbol. It's called Hedgehog in a Cage, and it's a popular mechanical puzzle in the Czech Republic that was permanently featured in one of Fogler's trilogies, Adventures in Dark Alleys. Sounds like a cool souvenir to get. Pass by the church and you can find the smallest house in Prague on nearby street. I would fit in there just fine. 
Keep walking and you will reach St. Agnes Convent, now part of the National Gallery, where you can find breathtaking and brutal Gothic art. The convent exhibitions have admission fees, but you can visit the garden of the convent for free. This is where St. Agnes herself spent most of her days. St. Agnes was a Czech princess. When she was eight years old, she was betrothed to the son of the Holy Roman Emperor. But after six years, their engagement was broken off because uh, European politics is more important than her feelings. Anyway, her dad got angry, went to war, and then she was promised to another king, but the emperor vetoed it because he wanted to marry her himself, and she finally said, screw you all, and did what all medieval feminists did. She became a nun and founded her own convent here in Prague. So you might be thinking, all these poor nuns lived here alone with no contact with men. Wrong. Saint Agnes also brought the monks of Saint Francis, who split the ground of the monastery between male and female part. The nuns and the monks never interacted, allegedly. They only had a window in the wall that connected them. But where some people see the dividing wall, others see the window of the opportunity. So don't tell me they did not at least have crushes on each other. OML sisters, did you hear Brother Jeremy in the morning mass? Something to discuss in the confession booth later. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm sorry, I'll burn in hell. Franciscan monks were famous for taking care of the sick in the monastery as early as 14th century. That is why the hospital here is named after St. Francis as well. This is also a place where in 1847 the first ever amputation with anesthesia took place. Huh. Next to the hospital you will find one of the biggest cubist houses in Prague called Teacher's Houses. And we are back to the Jewish quarter. Don't miss this little park with the statue of Moses by Franciszek Bilek. Moses is writing down Adam's name on the manuscript. That symbolizes the beginning of humankind's history. So who did the statue of Moses better, Bilek or Michelangelo? Like for Michelangelo, comment for Bilek. Everyone comes to see the old new synagogue, but not many notice the strange clock on the Jewish town hall. Take a look, it goes counterclockwise, instead of numerals you have Hebrew letters, and the shorthand is minutes, the long is hours. Tucked between the two buildings you will find Meisel Synagogue, one of the most beautiful synagogues in Prague. Okay, next statue we've already briefly mentioned before. It is the reader in the armchair. Pretty self-explanatory. And here we have the allegory of Voltava River, but locals call it Tresca. By the way, Vatsa, do you know how to recognize allegories of rivers? <laughs> They tend to recline. Anyway, on this little square we have a lot of interesting things, most of them we talked about. We have Clementinum complex and we have the municipal library, inside of which you will find a cool artwork called Idiom. And then we have this building, but there is nothing special about it. Wait, 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 what about the Pater Noster elevator? I have no idea what you are talking about. Take this street and walk a little further, avoiding the ever busy royal way. Then find the Church of St. Jill and the Golden Tiger Pub, where Bill Clinton and Václav Havel drank Czech beer. Take a sharp turn right and let's get lost in the streets of the Old Town a bit. We are passing by one of the oldest Gothic palaces in Prague, Ukunstadt, nowadays a cool craft beer spot. Take a look at this cute rollerblade house sign next to it, and let's ride smoothly through this little medieval looking street. Keep on going and you will reach this little square with embryo statue by David Czerny an infamous, controversial local sculptor. Nobody cared about the statue of his, apparently, until the theater where it is located spread some fake news that they were outraged and the statue is very controversial, and it received more publicity. Well, right next to Embryo, we have this narrow street with a timeline of Second World War. Check it out.
Next to it, you have Bethlehem Square with three things to see. The Naperstek Museum, named after a traveler and entrepreneur, Wojta Naperstek. A reconstructed Bethlehem Chapel, where Jan Hus used to preach up until the arguments with the Catholic Church became too uh, heated. And the statue of Sigmund Freud, who was installed here in the end of 90s and is hanging over a new millennium. He also traveled to Michigan, US, where locals thought he was a real man and called firemen for the rescue. Anyway, let's go visit another cozy square. On the way, you will see the product of Freud's work and a popular restaurant where something happened that day. Look, some Czech people are getting arrested because they drank water instead of beer at lunchtime. Have a look at Havel's Market and the square where they used to sell coal. Then you can enter Palace Platis, the history of which goes back to 14th century. In 1813, it was changed into an apartment building, the oldest and the biggest one of that type in Prague. To show that they had vacant flats, the landlords would leave this little owl sitting on a branch, and if all was occupied, the owl would be hanging down. Let's go back to the old town. Take a look at the Church of St. Martin in the wall, called like that because it was part of the city walls. Reach the street Bartolomniska, where a lot of bars are located, and go through this narrow street. Your next stop is Rotunda of the Holy Cross that we've talked about in our video of the oldest buildings in Prague. At the riverbank, you'll find this little park called the National Revival Park with Kraner's Fountain, also known as the Monument of Francis I, surrounded by allegories of Czech regions, arts and sciences. One of the writers called the statue Round and Round Goes Czech Pride with an Idiot Inside. Same as some other symbols of the imperial power, the statue of Francis was removed in 1919 but brought back in 2003. And we've saved some free art for last. The facade gallery, where you can scan the QR code and read about the exhibition. And the art passage, where you will find graffiti and a cafe to rest after such a long walk. For everyone who finished watching, we have a little surprise. In the description, you can find a map with all the places that we visited today, so you can follow it as well when you are in Prague. Thanks for watching, guys, and see you next week. Bye!